Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. Previously, a guy tore off the supercharger carburetor ignition off the 71 Chevelle here. And today, I'm putting a different intake carburetor ignition back in. Cold case radiator, swaps tires and wheels. And then I got to make it all run and work and do stuff. And the best part is I got no time. I mean, the guy is, he's probably, he's probably here right now, which is, you know, this, you want to do it last minute. You just, you got to wait. Just wait until there's no time. Well, here's the old goodie pile. If I was keeping it myself, I'd just take some garbage off the floor over there, back here, that one up. That's actually a nice one up there. But anywho, I don't want to do that to the next feller. So we chit chat and whatnots and took into consideration what that guy wanted. And then I called the carburetor shop, Forest Lake, Minnesota, chatted with those guys, and they put together this package for me. And I put their link down in the description because. I kid you not, you're going to be hard pressed to find more knowledgeable dudes and better prices. I mean, seriously. So, we ended up with the old standby performer manifold here, dual plane, 600 CFM metal Brock carburetor, and she's got the electrochronical stroke on her, and then some bling bling for the top. And this should be a nice package. She's got a crane cam in her 64cc heads, or fuel heads. That's a 355 right now, so this will be a nice little kit. It should have plenty of go still, especially with the four speed. So I'm going to start with the intake, and then we'll move on to the ignition. And I'm just, we're going to, I'm going to run out of time, but we're going to give her the old college try. Nope, I won't. Okay. I always get a little bit surprised when I open up these intakes. The castings are really, really nice. I'm used to, you know, cheap or used junk or, you know, Amazon stuff. So this is really cool seeing that. And then if you're wondering why this doesn't have a box, they actually built this for me. Literally I called them. They said, they're building it. Come up and get it. It'll be done when you get here. So she's bench tested and just dripping wet still. I mean, she's walking, walking. She's ready to go. When I'm putting the old intake funnel gaskets in, I like to lay them out like this and just put a little bit of RTV on them, not a lot. And then I'll wait for it to get nice and tacky. And then I'll come over here and stick them into place. And then I'll run a bolt and one on each end to kind of hold them in there. And I kind of like to glue them in basically. And you can use rubber cement or whatever a guy's got laying around. And I like to do that so the pegs are set up correctly. And then I can run, come back and run my quarter inch bead on the china walls here but I want these gaskets sitting in exactly where they need to go. Because on these small block chebbies, they like to leak right there, but they usually do it back there. And then they suck getting to. So take your time and do this right. Otherwise you got just oil. It's gonna go everywhere. Okay. Come to think of it, I've probably put 36,274,912 of these in before. It's getting kind of old. Something like that. And that. Stay. Bippity stipple flip flap. Oh, I think I'm losing my mind. Probably. Yeah, I think you are. Great. There's also this style. You kind of just lay it over the boop. And then there's the kind with the nipples, but these seem to always work out on me and I get a bad leak, so I've been doing the old RTV for many, many years. And I think I asked on the 307 build, do you uh, use the rubber ones or cork or RTV or... Let me know what you use. Put that down in the old comment box. All right, here we go now. Here we go. Let's go now. Easy. Easy. Boop. I like to give her just a little... Jiggle, 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 shake, rock, jiggle, shake, twist, rock, shake, jiggle. And then she's 
Oh, it's in there. Oh, I just realized I'm pretty sure I don't have this or that. Great. Intake's on and torcolated, so I could throw the valve covers back on. If a guy can wing it, pick up these reusable gaskets, because they, I mean, they're handy. And they got these, uh, don't squirt your gasket out of the bottom of the valve cover crush sleeve thing in the widget wheel. Those are nice too. Get on there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Just like that. It's hard to clean these in these little crevices when you get these little poker jabbers on them. Okay. Lightning whirler going in. Don't forget your gasket. That'll make a mess. I think I'm gonna unhook the zip ties and the lightning whirlers. They're gonna be slightly different lengths now because instead of having to go around the back and down, I can kind of, you know, come over top here. So to make that easier, I'll just organize them from longer-ish lightning wire with a shorter or, or more shorter. And then that'll make putting them on easier. I feel like this is something chicks would put on the old Pinterest, so I'm going to show you. Uh, scrubby side, soft side, gunk wipe. Go ahead and grab on your scrubby side. Just run your wires through here. And it's going to auto-magically just make them look brand new. Look at that. Super easy. Gets all the grease and oil and fingerprints and whatever else you got on here. Might as well do it while I'm in here, I guess, huh? Yep, good idea. Thanks, appreciate it. Well, you're trying, that's, that's what counts. Of course, all of you know this is 18436572. And if John Deere wasn't my first phrase, I'm pretty sure that would have been. Well, get off of there. Jiminy. What, what is this? What is this? What is it? What was that? Can't have nothing nice. <sighs> All right, everything's fine now. Just ruined my temp wire. Great. I just spent half my life looking for these. Yeah, and I really don't like them. I think they look cheesy and, you know, when you put your wires in, if you ever pull them back out, it bites into the jacket and ruins them. So I'm gonna do the right thing and Put them on. I don't have an Allen wrench for that at the house here. So I just took a brake fitting and clamped it into the old vice grips and this will work just fine. Well, it's the old fuel make it happen our time. Yeah. Shoot! Don't that look nice? I did a few things off camera. Mainly because I'm lazy and I'm getting tired, but this is wired up. Got the old lightning whirler cap on. Choke modulators installed, because I'm not going to do the wiring. Other feller can do that. Fuel lines done. Got these popped in. Made sure my transfer slots were square. Got these capped off. This is really wrong and likely to get stuck wide open, so I'm going to leave that. And next, I think we're on to the radiator, and then we're ready to fire this thing. <sighs> My neighbor heat level is going to go all the way to a 14. Look at this beautiful piece of machinery. Are you, are you looking at it? I mean, it's, it's beautiful. They really, really build these nice. I snipped one of these up last year on the power tour for the 69 Chevelle and I was really, really impressed. I ain't gonna kid you fellas, I'm gonna be brutally honest. They're spendy, but they're worth every single penny. And the fitment on these things is just mind-bottling. So I called the feller that is gonna own this next and let him know that the top cover that goes over top of this isn't right. I got the little 24 one and he needs the big whatever it is, 30 whatever. 
And uh, I don't have it, I don't have enough time. So his response was just vice grip garage it. So we're going to do that. I got some bailing fine and maybe I'll just hook a chain around it, but we'll figure it out. Oh yeah. That's nice. Well, no surprise, this slid in perfect. I mean, fits right on the money. And the Chevelles that came with extra cooling, those were the ones with the wider radiator. If you had standard cooling or non-AC, that was a smaller one. And there's little rubber cups or seat bushings or doodads down on the bottom here. You just slide them out to the next one and she pops right in. On to the fan here. And boy, I tell you what, I've seen more bar fights over flex fans than even Daisy Duke. What do you guys think about them? Some people hate them, some people like them. There's always an argument, you lose horsepower, you gain horsepower, this and that. Do you run clutches? Do you run plastic? Well, I don't know. You let me know. Well, I'm on to the shiny hoo here. It goes on top of the radiator. And normally there's some rubber bushing things that sit in here and they clamp over the old radiator and then tires are going down the road, you know, she don't wobble a hole in her. But mine are just gone. So I'm going to do the right thing and just take some heater hose and snip that in there. This should work just fine. Peek! Get some! I don't think that's your jingle, but I do like saying it. But honestly, I didn't want to put junk in this brand new cold case, so I gotta go with the best. I'm being really optimistic that she's just gonna fire right off. And we're gonna need this coolant. She will. Well, I think uh, I think the guy's ready to go ahead and fire on it. And if you're particular or you care, this is where you would uh, you know make sure that your belts are tight and everything's snug and you got oil and things like that. But I just I got no time left. We're just gonna twist on her. I got choke modulation set to 82 foot pounds over there with the old green wire. Got my uh, Lone Wolf 6000 trigger on here. Guy wants to be on this side. You can modulate the old throttle and twist on the lightning whirler over there. And I got a screwdriver, flat screwdriver in here so I can get the idle up where I need her. Got my timing light. Got the vacuum advance plugged off for now. Guy's just going to try to get her warmed up. We'll dial her into about 18, see how she likes that. Let it get nice and warm. Then we can uh, dial in the carb here. We'll use a vacuum gauge for that, wherever that thing is. Then we'll put some vacuum on the distributor and see what happens. I did change the spring on that. Didn't have time to show you. I'll show you in a future episode. Basically, you can adjust how quickly your timing comes in for a guy. If you want her all in by 4,000 or you want it a little bit later in your curve, you can adjust all that. Um, <clears throat> but this is, that throttle cable is just wrong. But anyway, uh, roughed in the timing, guy just uh, lined up the cap and my number one plug and then I Took her a skosh advanced, you know, you want it just, just a tickle. And it should fire, I'm, it's going to run like garbage initially, but just want to get her running. I'll twist on the cap, get her to where she smooths out a little bit for a guy. Then we're just going to heat on it. We'll look for some leaks, mainly fuel, fire's bad. The rest of it, she'll wipe up. So let's give her a rip. This is ready to run. She was just bench tested. Yeah, she's got fuel. All right, here we go. Let's bring the timing around. Just, just a tickle more.
cut dead right now. I think we lost power to something. Oh, distributor. That's going to be an issue. Let's fix it. No, we'll just plug her back in. Let's go again. Here we go now. just can't breathe. Whew, it's thick. Anyway, my neighbor hate level is probably at about 106 right now, but I don't care. I'm going to open up the old garage door and let her air out because my eyes are just, they're burning. Got her locked in at 18 degrees initial. And like I say, these carburetors guys, you both, I just, my eyes are on fire. Anyway, before I pass out, what I'm trying to say is, we're going to get some fresh air in here, and then we'll come back and work on the timing and the carburetor. Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm going to turn the idle mixture screws in the front here, watch my vacuum gauge, and I'm just going to try to get the most vacuum out of the old girl and make sure they're even between the two front screws. Okay, here we go. Just want to see if she fires right off. Well, she ain't perfect, but good enough to get a guy home anyway. Got to throw the tires and wheels on this thing and go deliver it, I guess. Great. That's dumb. Got the front snipped on. Them are 17s, but I keep them clean. In the back, I got some 18s for it. And these are 295, 35 18. Yeah, and I maybe put 1800 on these. I mean, they're brand new. I can't find them tires anymore, I don't think. I like the tread pattern. They bite in pretty good, too. I'm gonna lift up the old rear here, snag these on. I think I got a muffler clamp to replace. And then I gotta move a bunch of junk, including, you know, the old F2 shitty. And then I can get her out the driveway, I guess. I know, just give a guy a minute now. I'll get jack stands under here, I promise. Just, I gotta, I gotta get her up first. Guy's gotta be able to get his barrel chest under there, you know? This takes way too long. What's that? Def Leopard is pretty good. Dang. That is clean under there. I ain't kidding you. I don't even understand. I gotta tell a water guy to shut her down a little bit. I just got too much. Okay. Here we go. Let's go. Boy, with the garage door open, really starting to remind a feller what it's like to work down at the old shop, you know. I don't miss it one bit. This 
bring her on down now. Bring her down. Well, I suppose the guy ought to get one last walk around. That's uh, 10 years of work right here. And I uh, only put 2,200 miles on her, sadly. One of the reasons she's going down the road. My boys were just a baby when this thing was, well, newborn. When this thing was blown all the way down to the frame. She's gone everywhere with us, I think three different states. Lots and lots of memories. Pretty sad, but there'll always be another one, right? Probably not. Thanks to all you guys that continually watch and that are subscribed to the channel. If you're not, you might as well go ahead and do that.